Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to do a bit of a demonstration of how you can actually spot suspicious or unauthorized packets from your network. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up my browser and I want to generate some random traffic so let's say just going to type in here test in the search query and while I'm at it I'll just uh, start a live session as well. So there we go. Live session has started. It's now listening, and I don't know what I can do. Whatever you want, yeah, we can go to the speedtest.com. I'm sure we've all been here countless times when our ISP providers don't give us the speeds that we want, and we've cried about it. On end, I don't know. We can go head over to Google and head over to YouTube as well. All of these requests will be recorded. We'll see what I mean by it. And this is my only browser that is currently open. As you can see, there is nothing else here. So I'm just going to go ahead and close it. Oops, what is this? So we have some red warnings. Uh, red ones are usually the packets that drop. I'm not sure, too sure about this. But it doesn't really matter. I, seem, I don't seem to be getting HTTP traffic at all. This seems to be ridiculous. I'm just getting SSH traffic, which is encrypted. It stands for Secure Shell. And let me see where have my HTTP packets gone. They're probably being overrun. Type in HTTP and press enter. And look at this. Since we have a large amount of packets, it takes it a very long time. I mean, it's not a very long time, but uh, for only maybe 100,000 packets, it took you that much. But imagine if you were capturing traffic for an hour, that would, be, that would have been a pretty big problem. And here are our HTTP traff. Uh, packets, but I need to clear this. I need to figure out where what is happening with those SSH packets. What is that? What is being transmitted? So let's see if we can actually go, dig down into the packets themselves and see what sort of information can we pick up from them. So at this point of time, uh, I'm being overrun by them. There's just so many of them. I will cause this is going to cause me to crash. So I'm just going to stop this capture from going on. And I'm going to click on one of them to see what, what on earth is going on here. So, down here, I see who is communicating with who, as we've discussed before. You have MAC addresses, but I obviously know both of these MAC addresses, and this is local connection. These are all local connections, but for the sake of the tutorial, we can just assume that I have no idea that these are some strange addresses to me addresses to me and that I don't know to whom do they belong below we have internet protocol and it says source port uh, source IP address and destination IP address now you can conclude what it might be by this destination IP address of course again I obviously know uh, to which device does this IP address belong to but any IP address could be here and if you're not familiar with it you can always go on the net and search for it but that's Generally, that's not going to lead you uh, anywhere. It might tell you who owns it or something of a kind, but not necessarily that person is using it. It might tell you, like, this and this telecom is the owner of it. It's a VPN or it's a proxy or something of a kind, and it's not going to give you that. I mean, it might give you hints, but it's not going to give you definitive answers for sure. Down below, we go into Transmission Control Protocol, and it says that the communication is going over destination port 22 interesting so I'm just gonna go ahead into the filter field and type in what am I gonna type in here I'm gonna go TCP dot uh, port equals equals to 22 and I'm gonna filter out all traffic on port 22 you see how many packets there are there are too many for Wireshark to be able to do it that fast so it even gives me the time left in order to go through all these packets to filter it through and to show me what I want to see so they all look pretty much the same to me, except for the red ones. I'm guessing, yep, there we go. And if we click on another one here, and if we go down to SSH protocol, do you remember when? Do you remember the tutorial about HTTP pr protocol and how I said everything was unencrypted, all the information could be seen in plain text? Well, look at what SSH protocol looks like. I mean the information that it that it uh, the information that it sent over SSH protocol. It says encrypted packet, and you cannot make heads or tails out of this. I mean it is completely useless to you. Uh, if it has some sort of weak, weak, very weak encryption, you might be able to brute force it, but that that is not the case. That is very rarely the case. These keys are really long, and you, it is very unlikely that you will be able to brute force or crack this. So. The bad news of it all is that we don't know what sort of 
what sort of communication is going on here, what is happening. We just know that we are communicating with this address and that there are some packets that are being sent. So what are we going to do now? What, the thing that we're going to do now is I'm going to open up a terminal because Wireshark managed to tell me a great, a great deal of things. Basically I wouldn't be able to figure out what was going on if I didn't have Wireshark here. And that's that's where this tool really begins to shine. That's where it shows its purpose and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to clear the screen here and I'm going to do ls off dash i co oops sorry no, dash uh, small i colon and I want to see what is going on on that port 22 I want to get the process ID that is using that port I press enter and of course I got the wrong I got the command wrong uh, it's like this excellent okay so I see that the process is running hold on I can do this I can do a better job of this let me just go ahead and expand the terminal a bit there we go and let's look at it like this yeah this is much better so I do believe that this communication is over as it says close wait uh, but this is the PID uh, command is SSH this is this is the most important part so once you have the process ID if you're a root you can always kill it the good news is that the user currently using this process is not root user so you can be safe to an extent but still it is not good to have unknown processes on your computer that you have no idea what are and most likely are foreign processes in any case what anybody would do at this point of time is just kill and type the name type the name of the process 0057 that's it we go back into Wireshark and uh, damn it's now slowing down a little bit and no, I don't want to reload the capture file. I want to start the capture process again and close it without saving. I have applied this filter, but it would seem that no packets are being captured as I have closed all my browsers and I have killed this process. So once again, we have absolutely no unauthorized communication of whatsoever. This is also one of the good ways of actually verifying what is going on on your computer is just by close your browser, close all the programs that you know of that are yours and after that point of time go into Wireshark and observe the traffic, see what is going on. If you see that there are some sort of that it's still communicating uh, to the outside world that something is going on then there's something wrong for sure. In any case I thank you for watching I hope that you've enjoyed the tutorial Hope that it was informative and I bid you farewell till next time.